Hey y'all, this is Dina. Welcome to my channel. Okay, so last night, I don't know if you saw my video last night about the elastic and how you can use this kind as well as long as you reinforce so right over it um, several times. Um, I made one. It worked well for me. My granddaughter has it in her room in there. She's asleep, but um, this does, this will work. Um, just reinforce it really well. Um, also, I think I had a comment about um, tying off or something like that. I did hers. Uh, hers was like seven inches that I cut. Um, but if you add a little bit to it, if you felt better about tying it uh, up inside, just add some to it. So that way then it's tied off inside. I think it's going to be okay. But um, I thought I would show you how I make um, one with regular elastic. So I was talking to my sister last night and I told her, I need elastic, I need elastic. And she was like, she's like, you know what? Go in there and look and um, look and see if you have like some old sweatpants or something like that that maybe had elastic in it and you could take the elastic out. And so I went in there and I have bags of my mom's clothes that I'm gonna make memory bears. And I just haven't been able to bring myself to do it yet. And so I was looking through and I couldn't find anything. And I came in here and I said, oh, I wonder if there's a little bit of elastic like in the, in one of those bins of ribbon that I had that was my mom's. Because my mom always had all kinds of elastic and stuff too. Well, I couldn't find it. And I told her, I said, man, I want, I can use this other elastic, the little skinny stuff. But I really wanted to use the little bit thicker, just the regular elastic. And, um, so she's like, yeah, so I opened my drawers. I kid you guys not. I opened my drawer and on the top was a little bit of black. And I really think, okay, my sister goes, God sent that to you because she knows that you're trying to make this to help a few people. And so it only gave me enough. Um, I probably have enough for about maybe three or four more little masks but um i i'm just gonna show you the ones i've already made sorry i know it's a little close okay so here i've done this one with the white and here i have it and i haven't ironed these yet and here's one here that i did um with this fun racing look print that one's for my son-in-law and then of course I showed you guys, these are a little bit smaller and these are actually um, five by seven size. The ones that I've been making for adults are six by nines. So these will go for my grandsons. And um, so, and then, so when I found the black ones, I, you know, even though the black doesn't match this, at least it's a mask. So here's a purple one I did and I will iron these once I'm all done. Just don't have my ironing, ironing table over here right now. And here's another black one I did. So, yeah, they're turning out good. I'm getting better at my pleats. So, I thought I would jump on and just kind of show you these simple, simple masks that I have been making. Um, here's a solid one. Got a string on it for my son-in-law. So, as you see here, I just... And just uh, pull up the side and you know I'm trying these on and they look great so anyway let me just show you um, how I do this now these that I'm making are these masks they are just something to protect your face if you go out in public to the store I don't know if it would protect you from coronavirus but at least you know this would actually Maybe it would help you at least to feel a little comfortable to go to the store or something like that. Or if you're walking around your neighborhood and you're, you know, your state's saying, hey, everybody needs to wear a mask right now. So maybe this would actually do that. And I've done a tutorial. I did a tutorial last weekend. And I only, I put three layers of fabric. And these I'm doing two layers because this, this flannel that I'm using is actually pretty thick. Now, when I went to the store, I couldn't find any just like solid white flannel. So what I'm doing is these right here, I'm just, they have little prints on them and I just put it inside out. So I need to make sure when I do this that I'm putting it inside out. I know on my grandson's little ones, I forgot to do that, but I think they'll be okay. It's outside. They still got the nice fun stuff inside. 
Okay, so I've guesstimated my cut. I have about six by nine on both of these pieces of paper. On my elastic, I'm doing these seven inches because these are for adult. And so what I do is I take it and I put my elastic in one corner, just kind of going out just like this, okay? And then I'm just gonna kind of hold that in place and just make sure I don't want to pull it out too far. I just want to make sure I've got my my points here or my corners pretty close together. And um, then I'm going to start by sewing this one side. And I'm going to try to make sure I have it sewed over without moving my elastic. So, and I'm just using polyester um, thread. Now I'll start over here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to reinforce because you know there's going to be a lot of wear and tear on the elastic. Like I said, I know I did one last week, but I was watching Melanie Ham's video yesterday because everybody is coming out with, um, with different mask tutorials and she gave a great tip on how to make the pleats and I think I'm getting a little better at that part. So I thought I would share with you. Okay, since so now I'm getting down, you don't want to forget and just keep sewing without bringing your little piece of elastic down to this corner right down here, okay? So make sure you don't have it twisted. Bring it down here to the point and just keep sewing. When you get down here, make sure you back stitch over that elastic. Okay. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna back stitch a little bit here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and now I'm gonna use my down feature. And I'm going to start going across the bottom. The other one, um, I the other video I did, I saw it sewed two sides first. But I started doing it this way last night, and I found it was just as simple. And uh, so I decided to go ahead and show you what I was doing. Okay. And so when I get over here, close to the corner here, you want to add in your other piece of elastic. Again, it's seven inches. And there we go. Seven inch. Right here to the corner. Don't forget to back, back stitch. If I said backspace earlier, sorry y'all. I didn't go to bed till like midnight because I was so uh, I was trying to do this. Once I finally got the hang of them, you know, I kept trying to sew them and um I was excited to find this little piece of elastic. Um, so yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start sewing up this side. Oop, get down there. I, I started crying when I found this piece of black and, and all that. I told my sister, oh my goodness, this was, I did not see this. I had been searching and searching and she goes, see sis, God sent you some elastic. Man, you this this time right now with this coronavirus, let me just tell you, it actually causes you to really keep your faith. It really does, you know. Last night, my well, my granddaughter was over, and um, okay, so I'm gonna go down down this one, and I'm gonna stop, and then I'm gonna drag it over and and leave that opening in the bottom so I can turn it. But anyway, I prayed yesterday when I prayed, I said, thank the Lord that my granddaughter had been over with me. And, and she actually just, you know, just, we just sat and chatted and we had a good day, you know, and, um, I sure wish, you know, my husband would have been able to be here. Unfortunately, he has an essential job that at least they're still allowing him to work. So praise the Lord for that. You know, but my granddaughter, I could hear her kind of chuckle when I prayed. And 
said thank you to, thanks that Emma got to come over and you know, talk with me. Okay, I'm back to the end. I'm gonna backstage over here. Okay, now I've got it, everything sewed in. My elastic is in place. This is where I left my opening. So okay, just like this. You can you can uh, trim off your corners if you like. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna just kind of trim just to cut down a little bulk. Don't hit that a lot. Don't hit your seam. Go on the outside of your seam. Okay, so now let's turn this inside out. think this is a little simpler than the first one I posted. Okay, so I got my elastic. It's coming right out on the corners. Now, I don't have my iron set up, so I'll do my ironing in a bit. But here is what it looks like without any pleats. So you got the elastic. Just make sure you got everything all nicely, all nicely pushed out. And so there we go. And this right here is the bottom because this is where I left this opening. So once you're all done, you're gonna be, you're gonna be seeing, um, sewing it closed. So I'm just gonna put some little clips right here. So I know which one is the bottom. So I am more comfortable starting with the bottom of on this on the bottom here as you see when I'm doing my pleats okay so you can measure these out about every inch or so um, I'm just gonna guesstimate last night I just started guesstimating and it worked out fine for me so what I'm gonna do oops I hope I did not get that one I oh no I didn't I thought I got that twisted I was like oh no okay so I'm gonna go ahead and get ready to start sewing my seam down over here, and this is on one side. So I'm gonna sew it down about an inch or so. Okay, and I'm gonna use my down feature to keep it in place. Take your um, seam ripper, and lift my, I'm gonna lift my thing here, my presser foot. I'm going to stick my seam ripper underneath and you, what you do is you put your seam ripper under here and you let that top thing, now I'm not going to be able to do it, there, and then you just kind of fold it over and you sew up to that, so you take it and you fold, you fold it like this and then you sew all the way up there without going over it and then pull it out and keep sewing to make your, your little um, pleats. So I'm just gonna do that right here. And I should have already done that without starting it, but I wanted to show you guys. Okay, so I just went in and pulled it out. Now, now I've got my pleat sewed down. I'm gonna do a second one. And I'm gonna go ahead and kind of take my seam ripper and fold it over. Slowly do this. You don't want to break a needle, so you want to make sure. And now I'm going to do like go down about another inch, and I'm just going to take it and roll it. Do this slowly. You don't want to break a needle. And okay, and I've captured those seams that are those hint those uh things that I made. Now when I get over here, now I'm at the bottom. As you see here, I captured three. They they don't have to be perfect. Um, so I'm just doing doing the best I can now. I'm going to go along this bottom seam so I can get this seam sealed shut. Okay, and then when I 
I get over here to this side, as you see here, I got my three pleats right over here. So I'm just going to kind of guesstimate where I put the pleats on that other side. And I'll try to put it around the same. It was about, it comes up about an inch and a half from the bottom. So now that you're on this side, just kind of, kind of grab it. We're going to go the other way because, okay, we're going to go this other way. Like this, so I have to roll it because you want your pleats to be the same. So, oops, get over there. So, machine. Okay, I'm going to pull this out. I got my pleat. I'm going to get ready for my next one. And I'm going to do lift my presser foot. Okay, make sure you grab it. You're going the opposite way than what you were going. So your pleats are the same. Let me get my thing down here. Okay, and I've captured this one. And now I'm gonna do my last one. So let me lift this up. And I'm just gonna just pinch it up like this. You're going to need to go down just a little bit. You want to try to space them out about in the same area. Okay, got that under there. Now I'm going to bring this all the way up to the top. And then I'm going to go and top stitch the top here. Make sure I got this nicely pressed down. And then once you get around to this other side where you start at the beginning, what I did is I just tried to go over um, just go over where the pleats are one more time just to, you know, to make sure that they're right exactly where, um, where they're mainly reinforced. So I'm going to go over, go over it. And if you're not right on there, it's okay. Nothing is perfect because I'm using a gray thread. So I didn't really go right exactly on, but it's okay. If you want to be particular and pick it out, you can. Um, or if you wanted to zigzag these, you can do that too. So anyway, I'm just going to bring this over here. I'm going to try to go over this side again. So I've reinforced my elastic multiple times and I have reinforced forced the pleats. Now I went over this one a lot better than I did this one, but I'm not gonna worry about it. And see, there you go, you got your little pleats. You can iron these, you can iron them. But this one right here, I made one like this one for my son-in-law and um, this will just be one probably for my husband in like racing type material and there you go so anyway let me show you these days I'll put my mat back up here okay so again here's the ones that I have done here's the kid ones and these are the adult ones there's the other one I did with my son-in-law and literally I was so grateful when I found this black elastic because even though I know that this will work, I really wanted to just have regular elastic. 
So, um, yeah, I was so grateful. It, I was able me to make a few more with this kind of elastic. Um, also, too, if you have the ribbon elastic, I think that this would work. But you're, to me, it's a little too wide. Because um, mine is about, mine is like about three, four, seven inch wide. Hold on, let me double check. No, mine's a half an inch wide. So if you wanted it smaller, you could always fold it in half and then pull it as you're sewing it just to make this thinner or if you just felt comfortable. Because I've got tons of this one, but I just, it's hard to stay around someone's ear. Now, if you wanted to do this where you are um, attaching it where you make it where they go behind someone's head, you could do that. Or you can just do use these as ribbon and they get tied behind or I've seen tutorials where people are putting bias tape on the top and bottom and you're using it for ties, kind of like what they have at the hospital. Um, I don't know, different ways, different, just different ideas, different ways to do these. Um, anyway, I hope that you guys find this helpful. Thank you so, so much for watching. And um, y'all have a good, safe day. And um, I love you guys and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.